Hello and welcome to a fresh new episode of Science Monitor, our weekly update on all that is happening in the field of science and technology in and around the country. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. This week, on one side, researchers are rejoicing because they can now remotely control nanostructures. And on the other hand, nature enthusiasts are happy as we are richer by 349 new species of plants and animals. We'll get you all the details, but first up, a look at the headlines. Taking a cue from nature, IISC researchers succeed at remote controlling nanoparticles. Addressing climate issues, National Conference on Climate Change held in Delhi. Vigyan Prasar's Science Fusion Workshop makes vacations entertainingly educative. 349 new species of plants and animals discovered in the past one year in India. And in focus today is the importance of light on our health and in the field of healthcare. And now news in details. As the world goes nano, we need to know how to manipulate and control nanoparticles to suit our needs. In this context, experts of the Indian Institute of Science have developed new remote control technology to direct the movement of nanoparticles. The technology, which is inspired by nature, offers much scope in the area of nanomedicine and targeted drug delivery. More in this report. With the scientific community fast striding in the direction of understanding systems at nanoscale, the world today has gone from macro to micro to nano. With the emergence of super speciality compounds and materials, nanomedicine, nanodiagnostics and nanotherapeutics are poised to make the next generation healthcare a glorious reality. In this context, while controlled drug delivery has met with considerable success, scientists have begun grappling with the issue of movement of nanodrug packets in biological fluids like blood. Solving this challenge, a team of researchers from the Indian Institute of Science Bangalore under the leadership of Dr. Ambrish Ghosh have developed a remote control technique to maneuver nanostructures. The non-invasive technique inspired by nature is based on the use of magnetic fields to control the motion of nanofilaments. We used a very innovative uh, technique called glancing angle deposition to make these objects. The idea is you deposit some material by heating it up and when you deposit it on a particular substrate, you manipulate the substrate in certain ways so that you can get shapes of many different shapes and symmetries. In our case, the shape that we chose was that of a corkscrew. Subsequently, we put a little bit of magnetic material into this corkscrew and then when we take these things out, put it in some little small fluidic chamber, a chamber that has some liquid, in mostly for example it could be water, and then we rotate the, when we put it under a rotating magnetic field, the screw will rotate and as a result translate. The technique uses a constant magnetic field to align the nanofilaments in different directions and an oscillating magnetic field to provide energy for the movement of filaments and to place them in predefined positions. This novel technique overcomes the disadvantages of conventional optical tweezers used for moving nanostructures which requires focused laser beams and cannot work with metals. The team has also proved that the technique can be expanded to many number of particles. Nanoparticles are typically particles between 1 and 100 nanometers, that is 10 to the power minus 9 meters in size. A nanoparticle is a small object that behaves as a whole unit with respect to its transport and properties. The study offers new hope for developing nanomedicine and carrying small packets of medicine to sick cells where the drugs can be delivered in a controlled manner. Addressing the issues of climate change and environment degradation, a national conference on climate change was held in Delhi on 18th of June. 
The conference was inaugurated by Minister of State for Science and Technology and Ministry of Earth Sciences, Vyas Chaudhary. Here's a report. Temperatures soaring to extremes, reduced monsoons and flash floods. With dramatic changes in climate becoming increasingly visible in the country, robust measures to deal with the problem has become the need of the hour. In order to address this pressing need and seek effective management solutions, the Associated Chambers of Commerce of India on 18th June conducted the National Conference on Climate Change in New Delhi. The conference was inaugurated by the Honorable Union Minister of State for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Sri Y.S. Chaudhary, and was attended by several eminent personalities, including Sri Evind S. Holm, Ambassador of Norway to India, Sri Francois Richier, Ambassador of France, Sri Mahesh Babu, Managing Director IL and FS Environmental Infrastructure and Services Limited, Ms. Neeraj Singh of Yes Bank, Dr. K.D. Gupta, Chairman Asher Cham, National Council on Climate Change, etc. The conference focused on the National Action Plan on Climate Change being implemented in India and issues on the need for reaching a consensus to achieve a legally binding and universal agreement on reducing emissions at the conference of the parties. Speaking on the occasion, the minister called for an integrated approach to find solutions for issues concerning economic sustainability and for developing green technologies to meet demands of rural India. Bored children and their endless questions. While vacations may be fun time for kids, parents look for ways to channelize the kids' energies into something productive. The Science Fusion Workshop is the ultimate option for making vacation time entertaining and educative. Recently organized in Noida by Vigyan Prasar, the Science Fusion Workshop with its many interesting activities proved to be a hit among children. All parents will agree that bored children during summer vacations are tough to handle. Children continuously seek novel ways of entertainment which also offers new learning. Vigyan Prasad Science Fusion Workshop, organized recently, has proved to be a perfect solution in this context. The workshop, conducted during 17th to 22nd June, was an endeavor towards increasing the learning ability of children and promoting their interest in science. Vigyan Prasar, as a part of the Science Fusion Workshop, conducted a variety of interesting activities which included science movie shows, robotics, videography, photography, mathematical games and craft work. Mathematics is often perceived as a tough subject by kids. The Science Fusion Workshop consisted of interesting sessions on learning mathematics through origami and ancient Japanese art that uses paper and numbers to create beautiful crafts. Children of many age groups enthusiastically took part in the workshop. Main maksad hai ki bachche yahan par activity ke base se science ko sikhe aur unke andar method of science ki ek vidhi kis tarah se unko science ke bare mein janna hai, parakhna hai, experiment karna hai aur ek decision making tak pahunchna hai. Jise hum kehte hain method of science. तो वो अपने आचरण में कैसे लाएं तो इस पे मेन इस कार्यक्रम का फोकस है जिससे वो अपने दैनिक चर्या में विज्ञान विधि का प्रयोग करें और अपने डिसीजन खुद ले सकें ऑफ्टन किड्स बैफल एडल्ट्स विद द क्यूरियोसिटी एंड क्वेश्चंस टू क्वेंच द क्यूरियोसिटी द वर्कशॉप इंक्लूडेड अ सेशन कॉल्ड मीट द साइंटिस्ट वेयर एक्सपर्ट रिसर्चर्स प्रोवाइडेड आंसर्स टू चिल्ड्रंस क्वेश्चंस the workshop also saw the release of books on subjects like robotics and biochemistry for the kids. Vigyan Prasar, every year in association with EduSat and DECU, organizes various educational activities for students across different states in the country. Workshops like Science Fusion not only fuel the scientific curiosity of children, but also go a long way in making their vacations entertaining and productive. Western Ghats and the northeastern hills of India are an ecologist's paradise. 
These complex ecosystems are home to thousands of organisms ranging from mammals and birds to reptiles and amphibians. At a time when plants and animals are increasingly under threat, nature lovers and conservationists in India have a reason to be happy. According to the list of new discoveries by the Botanical Survey of India and the Zoological Survey of India, 349 species of flora and fauna have been discovered in the country in the past one year. With biodiversity across the world under the threat of extinction, concern is mounting across the globe. But now, nature enthusiasts have a big reason to cheer about. For reports indicate that adding to the rich biodiversity of India, 349 new species of flora and fauna have been discovered in the past one year. This includes 173 species and genera of plants and 176 new species of animals. The list of new discoveries has been released by the Botanical Survey of India and the Zoological Survey of India on 5th June, the World Environment Day. Of the new plant species discovered, significant ones include 9 new types of bananas, 4 species of black plum, 3 species of wild gingerbirds and 10 species of orchards. The newly discovered animals include 93 species of insects, 24 species of amphibians, 23 new species of fishes, 7 species of palembolans, 12 species each of arachnidans and crustacean, 2 species of reptiles and 1 species of mollusca. While Western Ghats accounts for 22% of the new discoveries, the Eastern Himalayas and the Northeastern states each accounts for 15% of the species found. Experts have also added 105 new records of plants and 61 new records of animals. A new record in conservation refers to the animals and plants that are found elsewhere in the world but have been spotted in India for the very first time. With this new list, Western Ghats and the Northeast have been unanimously agreed to be biodiversity hotspots in the country. And now it is time to take a short break. We'll be right back. Keep watching Science Monitor. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. Let us now have a look at some important science and technology activities happening in India and abroad in our next segment, Science Express. With the aim of extending the single window mechanism to address the technology need of farmers, the Union Cabinet has approved a fund of Rs 3,900 crore towards the continuation, strengthening and establishment of Krishi Vigyan Kendras. The program foresees the continuation of existing 642 Krishi Vigyan Kendras and establishment of 109 new Krishi Vigyan Kendras under the 12th plan. The scheme proposes inclusion of many new ideas like information and communication technology to advance agriculture. Farmer First Program Creation of the Farm Innovation and Disaster Management Fund, Technology Information Units, Mini Seed Processing Facilities, Micronutrient Analysis Facilities, Solar Panels and lots more. Extending healthcare benefits to the soldiers and villagers dwelling in remote areas along Bangladesh and Pakistan borders, India's Border Security Force will now provide telemedicine service programs covering more than 2,000 border outposts, including some strategic points. The first phase of the program that has been launched will cater to both the force and civilians at the border where doctors are not able to reach and there are no hospitals nearby. With the aim of advancing the country's national program on micro-air vehicles, jointly coordinated by the Defence Research and Development Organisation and the Department of Science and Technology, India's Council of Scientific and Industrial Research has set up a micro-air vehicle aerodynamics research tunnel. This first-of-its-kind facility, set up in India, is established at the National Aerospace Laboratories campus in Bangalore. Setting up an excellent example in the area of recycling, Jamshedpur is now using plastic waste for road construction. 
a novel technology developed by Jamshedpur Utility and Services Company, a subsidiary of Tata. The technique used shredded plastic waste mixed with bitumen to pave the roads. According to experts, plastic helps bind the road construction mix better, resulting in longer lives for roads and also helps in cutting down the overall maintenance cost of a road. The novel technology provides much scope for eliminating plastic waste and conserving natural sources of bitumen. Taking a step towards sustainable development using green energy, the Indian Railways have launched a non-AC coach of Rewari Sita per passenger train lit by solar panels installed on its roof. The solar panels, which generate about 17 units of power in a day, will enable the lighting system in the coach. Installed at a cost of about Rs 3.90 lakh, the setup will help the railway save Rs 1.24 lakh per year spent on power. The famous auction house Profiles in History, which offers historical documents, autographs and Hollywood memorabilia, auctions some of the letters written by the renowned physicist Albert Einstein for 420,625 US dollars recently. The letters, which include both typed and handwritten letters autographed by Einstein himself, captures his thoughts on philosophical matters in science and reflects his perspectives on God, religion, atomic bomb and Nazi Germany anti-Semitism. In an exciting new discovery, experts from the Prude University and West Lafayette have identified the South African counterpart of Lucy, the East African hominid. The South African counterpart, called Littlefoot, has been identified from a nearly complete fossil skeleton from South Africa's Kerfontein Caves, which scientists estimate are 3.67 million years old. While some experts do Littlefoot's distinctively shaped molar teeth, flat face and other traits justify assigning it to a new species, others classify it under Australopithecus africanus. The discovery indicates that several species of Australopithecus must have extended over a much wider area of Africa than just a small number of fossil sites in East Africa and South Africa. European Space Agency's space probe Philae Lander has revived after seven months of being stranded on the comet since its landing in November. According to scientists at ESA, Philae has sent an 85 seconds long signal regarding housekeeping data on the status, temperature, power as generated by the solar generator. Philae had gone into hibernation after landing in the shadows of the comet and running out of power. Now, with the comet speeding closer to the sun, the probe is receiving increasing amounts of sunlight enabling its solar panels to produce the power needed for it to send data. Scientists hope that samples drilled from the comet by the probe will help understand how the planets and possibly even life evolved. Would life have been possible in a dark world? Perhaps not. Research states that overall physical and mental well-being of humans depends on light as much as it depends on nutrition and rest. Many of our bodily functions are dependent on light. Now, new links deciphered show effects of natural and artificial light on our health. Hence, it is important to understand the role light plays in our health. From photosynthesis to vision and general well-being, light is important for all aspects of health and life. How does light affect human functioning and health is an interesting question to explore in this context. According to expert studies, light affects human beings both psychologically and physiologically. The most obvious effect of light on human health is in enabling vision and performance of visual tasks. We are able to see when light reflected from objects travels through the pupil and cornea of the eye and the lens and forms an image of the object on the retina. Not just vision, but several studies have demonstrated the importance of light in reducing depression and fatigue, improving alertness, modulating circadian rhythms and treating conditions such as jaundice among infants. Light falling on the retina and being transmitted to the hypothalamus 
controls the body's circadian rhythm, that is, the body's internal clock. That is why bright light in the morning helps us wake up and feel alert and energized, while dimmer light at night makes us feel sleepy and helps us stay asleep. Any changes in the light pattern affects our biological clock and in turn affects our sleep pattern and mood. Did you know that light is directly absorbed by the skin to stimulate important chemical reactions in the blood and other tissues? Most important of these reactions is the synthesis of vitamin D in the body, which is accomplished when the body is exposed to sunlight. Exposure to light has been proved to prevent and cure jaundice in infants, which is caused because of accumulation of a substance called bilirubin. Exposure to light bleaches the bilirubin into a form that can be excreted from the body and thus cure jaundice. One of the earliest of diagnostic practices involved the use of microscopes. Physicians observed the samples under a microscope to detect the presence of microbes or other anomalies. Microscopes, as we all know, are based on the physics of light. It is surprising to note that over the years, many variations of microscopes like electron microscopy to detect viruses and fluorescence microscopy to quickly detect bacteria and fungi at very low concentrations have been developed. What happens when we fracture a bone or doctors suspect an internal damage? Yes, all of us are aware of X-ray imaging. X-rays are electromagnetic waves similar to light but with a shorter wavelength. X-rays are used to record clinical images on a computer or films based on its absorption by the body. Many other important clinical imaging techniques like the computer tomography or CT scan that helps in the 3D visualization of internal organs quickly to detect problems is based on the use of electromagnetic radiations like light and manipulation of light. The laser technology, which is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation based on the light with special properties, has proved to be a boon for healthcare. These include treating cancers and surgical removal of tumors, smoothing skins, diagnosing bone diseases, and correction of eye sites and eye surgeries. Similarly, laparoscopy, which involves the use of laparoscope consisting of a light source and a camera, has revolutionized the field of surgery and made keyhole surgery a reality. What is more, advanced light-based techniques called Super Resolutions Fluorescence Microscopy available today helps in the visualization and imaging of ultra-structures of individual cells to detect defects at micro level. While light is important to stay healthy, the amount of light we need also depends on the person, time of day and the activities. Also, natural sunlight and artificial light has varying effects on the body. Hence, according to experts, it is important to spend an hour or more outdoors to compensate for the artificial light we are so used to. This year, as we celebrate the International Year of Light, let us understand the importance of light on our health and make its judicial use as part of a routine. Well, that is all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program. You can send your feedback and suggestions to us. Our email ID is news at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar C24, Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi 110016. Well, that is all for today, but we'll be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha TV and think scientific. Bye-bye.